Hi everyone, welcome back to Geeks for Geeks. In this video, we will discuss the problem find pair given difference. So basically, this problem has been asked previously in companies like Amazon and Visa. So let us read this problem statement and understand what we have to do here. So problem says that we will be given a array which will be consisting of n integers, and we'll also be uh, will also be given another integer x, and we have to return one if there exists a pair. In the array whose absolute difference is x. Otherwise, we have to return minus one if there exists no such pair. So, if you will see uh, in this particular example, if you will see here, so let's say the total number of elements were six and the x value is seventy-eight. Then the element two and the element eighty. These two element have the difference between them as what as seventy-eight. That is the given difference. So you will return one. If you will see the next example, so let's say if the n value is five and you have got the difference as forty-five. So you can see here that in the given array there are no two elements which you can subtract and get the difference as 45. So one of the very basic ways to do it will be a brute force approach. Okay, if I'm thinking about an n square approach, so what I can do is I can run a i loop uh, starting from zero, then I can run a j loop, let's say starting from i plus one, and then I can check that if the difference of a of j minus a of i, if it is equal to x, then I can always return true. In this case, the time complexity of my code would be how much order of n square because I am taking two loops, uh, one inside the other. So the overall complexity would be order of n square. Can I do something uh, better than this? Yes, there can be uh, two approaches that I can follow. Obviously, when you have a question where you have to find a pair with a given sum or difference, then hashing also comes to our mind as well as two pointers. So let's talk about a two pointer approach. Normally, what we do is normally we have a habit of sorting the array and then applying two pointer. So suppose that if I sort the array and then I apply two pointer, so overall complexity uh, sorting would uh, would take n log n time plus uh, the two pointer will take order of n time. So overall complexity would be nothing but n log n guys, right? So you can observe one thing here that if I do sorting based approach, so it is better compared to the brute force approach. Sorting plus two pointer is better. Where uh, compared to the brute force approach, but can we apply a normal sorting where we can have i standing at zero and j standing at n minus one? Think about it. So if what happens is if the jth element minus the ith element, if their difference is equal to x, then I'll directly return true that it is fine. But suppose that if what happens is if the jth element minus the ith element, okay, if the sum let's say if it is greater than x, then what can happen? If suppose that the sorry, if suppose that the difference, if the subtraction of the jth element and the ith element, if it is greater than x, then what can I do? Normally, in a sorting, uh, in a two-pointer approach, we used to apply two-pointer whenever we had to find the sum of two elements, sum of the ith guy and the jth guy. But when we are talking about difference here, then there can be two scenarios because we cannot directly say that if the uh, difference uh, is greater than x, then we will uh, then we will do j minus minus. If it is greater than x, so there are two opportunities that you can have. Either you can say that you can do j minus minus because if you do j minus minus, then what will happen? Your difference will start decreasing, so it will start coming closer to x. Or if you if if you are seeing that the difference is greater than x, then you can say that maybe if you do i plus plus, so your ith element might increase, and then the difference will come closer to x. So you have both the options available here, right? So since you have both the options available here. That's why you cannot uh, directly start the i pointer from zero and j pointer from the end. You need to do what? You need to uh, start your i and j both from the starting, where i will start from zero and j will start from one, because you don't want to miss any scenario here. The thing is, if you'll have your i pointer at in the starting and j pointer at the end, and suppose if the difference of the jth guy and the ith guy is greater than x, then in order to make the difference closer to x, you can either decrease your j from the higher from the higher element, you can reduce. Or you can also try to increase the lower element. That is, you can do i plus plus. So both scenarios are possible. So you don't want to uh, miss out on any scenario by only doing j minus minus or i plus plus. So that is why in this case you will start your pointers from the starting, and i will start from zero, j will start from uh, one. Okay. So let's try and uh, quickly code this two pointer approach that we have talked about. I hope you have understood the intuition and the reasoning behind it. So what I will do is basically whatever array is given. First of all, I'll sort it. So I'll sort arr comma arr plus n. So whatever this array size is, I'll sort it first of all, and then after that, you can say that my i will start from zero, then my j will start from the index one here. Then after this, what I'll do is I'll say that while the i is lesser than n till that point of time, uh, sorry, 
while my j variable is lesser than n till that point of time we need to iterate correct now what we will do here is suppose that if what happens is if after sorting this array if the jth guy minus the ith guy suppose if the difference is equal to the required x value then i will say that we can directly return one here guys otherwise uh, suppose that what happens is uh, if the difference okay if the jth guy minus the ith guy as i have discussed if the difference suppose is greater than the given value x then if the difference is uh, greater so now since uh, since i am having what since i am having my i and j from the starting so if the difference uh, is coming out to be greater uh, than the x value so in that case i'll say that i'll increase my left pointer okay i'll i'll increase my i by doing that what will happen the difference will come closer to x but at the same time i also need to check that after increasing my i variable if i and j are pointing at the same place then i'll do j plus plus okay so this is one condition that i need to keep a check on otherwise uh, what i'll say is that suppose if the difference is lesser so if the difference is lesser then there is no option but only one option to increase the j value because you want to go to a higher element and then at the end of the day if it is not found then you can directly return minus 1 that uh, no such uh, pair exist with the given difference as x so i i hope you have understood this reason that if the difference of the jth guy and the ith guy if it is greater than x so in that case you have to uh, do i plus plus you have to move to a higher i value and if i becomes same as uh, uh, j then you have to increase your j so it says that there is some issue while sorting the array so yeah the thing is that i have selected the java language so let me just uh, change the compiler here okay so now when i'll select the c++ language so it should get compiled properly let's check and then we'll submit this approach as well and after this we'll talk about the map approach uh, okay so it says that we have a vector okay so uh, since we have a vector so we can do array dot begin comma arr dot end okay so since we have a vector then we can sort it like this and let's compile it now to check if it is working fine or not it should work fine it is working fine let's submit this code will get accepted eventually you can uh, you'll see uh, okay so yeah, you can see that this code gets accepted so this is a different two pointer approach where as i said you need to check if the difference between the jth guy and the ith guy is greater than x so you might think that in order to make the difference closer to x you can either in decrease the jth guy or you can increase the ith guy so you could have done both if you would have applied the two pointers normally but here we uh, don't want to miss any scenarios that's why we are having your r i pointer from 0 and j pointer from 1 now coming to the other part uh, because we have discussed about brute force n square approach we have discussed about n log n plus order of n uh, two pointer approach now let's talk about the map approach so it's very easy uh, that we can apply a so map based approach in order to solve this problem because suppose that uh, if we are at a particular element right so whenever uh, whenever you will be at a particular element so you want the difference of the elements to be equal to x so let's say if i have got the ith element with me current element and then uh, if you give me the difference as what x so what can be the other element okay what can be the other element either the other element will be array of i plus x for me okay an element which has a difference of x with me either it will be x steps ahead of me or it will be what x steps behind me so either it will be a of i minus x so inside the map i'll always check that if i have already seen an element if i'm at the ith element a of i and if i've already seen an element inside the array which is a of i plus x or which is a of i minus x then i'll say that yes i do have uh, elements with the given difference as x and i will return one otherwise at the end i'll return minus one so let's code this up so we'll use unordered map here and uh, let's name it as int comma int let's name it as mp then after this what i'll do is i'll say that for uh, my int i starts from zero i is lesser than the size then we'll do i plus plus now what i'll do is i'll check inside the map that if the map dot find uh, arr of i plus x because either the element can be plus x steps ahead of me or it can be minus x uh, step minus x steps behind so either it can be arr of i minus x okay so if such an element exists if it is not equal to map dot n so basically if it's not equal to map dot n right so and or this guy is not equal to map dot n so if any one of them is available if it's not equal to map dot n then we will do what then we'll return one that yes there exists one such pair otherwise if it's not uh, available then we'll say that inside the map we'll push the current ith element and we'll mark it as let's say one here as present okay 
and at the end of the day if we never found it so we'll return minus one simply let's not try and compile this code to check if it is working fine or not it should work fine ideally because i've not made any mistakes uh, it works fine on the samples let's submit this code for this code the time complexity would be order of uh, n and the space complexity would also be order of n because i'm using extra map you can see that this code also get accepted so i hope that you are clear with the brute force approach uh, with the opt uh, with the slightly optimized two pointer and sorting approach and lastly you're clear with the map approach if you have understood all the three approaches please comment down plus three or understood in the chat and thank you for watching this video keep coding guys